part 1b of the private hire handbook 2003 welcome to the series assessment by tfl transport for london all new pab applicants and existing pab license holders who wishes to renew their pab license must take the serious assessment test by TFL. This is a mandatory requirement and all the information can be found in the PHB handbook to enable the applicants pass the serious assessment test. Serious assessment test is a mandatory requirement by TFL, Transport for London. The acronym for SERU is Safety, Equality and Regulatory Understanding. Remember to subscribe to this channel and share this video with any aspirant that seeks to obtain a PAV license for, from Transport for London. The PAV Handbook 2003 is divided into 10 sections. And in this video, we have grouped it in two parts, part one and part two. So this is part 1B. Section two, licensing requirement for PHVs. This section gives you information on some of the licensing requirements and rules for private hire vehicle. Even if you do not own a licensed vehicle, you should know about these requirements. Licensing, licenses and license desk. Once a PAV has been licensed, the registered keeper is given a vehicle license and the license desk will be fixed to the front and the rear windows of the vehicle. The registered keeper also receives a leaflet which briefs, briefly describes the condition of the license. PHV license lasts for one year and the vehicle must have another licensing inspection before a new license can be issued. Example of a PHV license desk is demonstrated here in the diamond shape with a yellow outline. The license desk must not be damaged or change in any way. You should not remove the desk, even if you are using the vehicle for private purposes. The license desk contains security features, which means that the desk will be permanently damaged if you try to remove them. If the license desk fixed to a PHV are damaged, lost or stolen, the vehicle owner should contact TFL immediately so that the replacement desk can be issued. Please remember, you cannot use a vehicle for private hire purposes if the license desk are missing, have been badly damaged, or their appearance have been, has been spoiled in any way. In some exceptional circumstances, the vehicle might be given an exemption, which means that the license desk do not have to be displayed. In these cases, you will receive an exemption notice which you, the driver, must carry at all times when the vehicle is being used as a PHV. Insurance. Every PHV must have hire or reward insurance. The insurance policy must be valid when the vehicle is licensed and at all times when the vehicle is being used as a private hire. We encourage you to carry details of the vehicle's valid hire or reward insurance policy whenever you are working, as well as evidence that you are insured to drive the vehicle under the policy. For example, if the vehicle is insured by your operator, you can carry the insurance details or display them within the vehicle. You must make details of the insurance available to the police when you are asked for them. 
you must also provide insurance details to a passenger or member of the public if the vehicle you are driving is involved in a collusion. Collusion damage. Vehicles must be kept in good condition. If you own your PHV, you must tell TFL within 72 hours of any collusion that affects the safety, performance, appearance or comfort of the vehicle. The vehicle may need to be re-examined before it can continue to be used as a PHV. Information about vehicles. There may be circumstances where TFL has important information about the vehicle you are driving. For example, the manufacturer may have told TFL about a fault with the vehicle that means it needs to be returned to the manufacturer for repair. If you are the registered keeper of the vehicle, TFL or the manufacturer may write to you to explain what needs to be what you need to do to get your vehicle fixed. You should always follow the instructions in the letter. A letter from TFL may also explain that the vehicle cannot be used for private hire purpose until it has been fixed. It is important that you read any letter you receive from TFL or the manufacturer carefully. Section 3. Carrying out private hire journeys. Private hire services are an important part of London's transport network, providing a wide range of services for residents and visitors. This section covers the basic requirements for drivers when carrying out private hire bookings. Bookings. As a London PHV driver, you can only carry out bookings that have been received from a licensed London PHV operator. You must carry out these bookings in a London licensed PHV that has PHV license desk on display unless exempted. TFL's website has a license checker tool which contains the details of all licensed private hire drivers, vehicles and operators. This is a public register, which you and anyone else can use. You should never accept a booking from an unlicensed operator. If you are in any doubt, you should ask the operator for their operator license number and check these details using the online license checker tool. It is important to remember that a PHV is not a taxi, into brackets, placa. This means that you are not allowed to pick people up on the street or at stations or airports unless they have been booked through a licensed operator. This includes the streets outside your operator's center. You must not allow any passenger to enter your vehicle before you have received a booking from your operator. You must not give any sign or say anything to a member of the public that suggests that you are available for hire without a booking. You must not encourage any member of the public to approach you or your PHV if they don't have a valid booking. If someone does come up to you, you are allowed to hand out a business card with the number of your operator on it or you can provide other contact details such as a website. Booking details. Before the start of each journey, your operator is required to record certain information about the booking, although you are not personally responsible for collecting or recording these details. You should know about this requirement and let your operator know about any changes. For example, Tell your operator if the final destination changes. The information your operator must record includes the date the booking is made, if different, the date, if different from the date of the journey, the name of the person the booking is for, 
they agree time and place for picking up passenger. Or if more than one location, they agree time and place for picking up the first passenger. The main destination, the agreed fare or estimated fare, the name or other identification of the driver carrying out the booking, and the registration number or other identification of the vehicle that will carry out the booking. Operating centers in late night venues. If your operator has a license to operate from a night, a late night venue, example a pub or a nightclub, the operator can only take bookings inside the venue at booking locations specified on their license. You can only accept a fare if the passenger has booked the journey through a licensed London operator. You must not approach people on the pavement or roadside at night venues to offer them private hire service. If you do this, you may be committing an offence and could be prosecuted. If a customer approaches you, then you should tell them to contact a licensed private hire operator to make a booking. You, as the driver, are responsible for parking your vehicle, the noise it makes, and for your own behavior. Please think about the environment around the operating center and how noise, traffic, and or customer movements may affect the people living in the neighborhood. Do not behave in an antisocial manner. Do not leave litter in the street or road. Do not go to the toilet in a public place. Do not leave your engine running. Have respect for the area you are working in. Remember, if TFL or the police gets complaints about a driver's behavior, they will investigate it and depending on the sort of complaint they receive, it will result in licensing action or prosecution. Airports. Airports are private property and can make their own rules into brackets by laws about taxi and PNVs. Heathrow Airport has its own set of bylaws which can find which you can find here. You should know about these in case you get a booking or from the airport. You cannot enter Heathrow Airport to pick up passengers unless you have a booking from your operator or you are pick, you are parked or parking in an official car park or the PHV authorized vehicle area to wait for a booking. When picking up passengers, you must always use an official car park. You should not wait in a local car park or residential street. Remember that the taxi rank at Heathrow Airport and London City Airport are for licensed taxi. Taxis, black cabs only. You must not stop, wait or pick up or drop off passengers at airport taxi ranks. Journeys outside Greater London. As a London licensed PHV driver, in a London licensed PHV, you may carry out a private hire booking accepted by a licensed London PHV operator where the pickup point and or the destination for the journey is outside Greater London as long as the booking has been accepted by a licensed London PHV operator. If you have any doubt about whether the journey is legal or not, you should ask your operators. Your operator. First, TFL has no power to set or control the fares charged by PHV operators. However, it is important that all customers understand the fare they are going to be charged. Your operator is responsible for either agreeing a fare for the journey with the passenger or giving them an accurate estimate before a journey starts. 
if your passenger decides to change the destination of their journey, ask you to pick up extra passengers or has extra lug luggage, you should tell your operator as soon as it is safe to do so. Your operator will then be able to update the fare or estimated fare for the journey. You should check with your operator what to do if your passenger disagrees with the fare or is unable to pay it at the end of the journey. You should also check with your operator what the arrangements are for giving out receipts. Lost property at the end of the journey. You should remind passengers to make sure they have not left anything behind. You should also check your vehicle for lost property after every journey. If you have any of the passengers' luggage in the boot, do not forget to check that too. If you find any lost property, you should take it back to your operator. The operator will keep the property and make a record of it. By law, your operator must keep a record of any item or lost property they hold. Let your operator know as soon as you find anything in case the passenger has already been in contact about it or about the item. Suspicious items and behavior. Terrorist attack can happen at any time or at any place without warning. Items left in your vehicle are likely to be items passengers have left behind. But if you are suspicious of an unattended item, call the police immediately on 999 and follow their instructions. Beware of what is going on around you and of anything that seems different or unusual or doesn't feel right or anyone that you think is acting suspiciously. It could be someone you know, a passenger, or even someone or something you notice when you are driving. That does not feel quite right. You can report your concern about suspicious activity to the Confidential Police Anti-Terror Hotline on 0800 789 Don't worry about wasting police time or getting someone into trouble. The police will decide if the information you give is important and will treat it as private and confidential. When a booking cannot be carried out. When an operator has accepted a booking and you have agreed to carry it out, you should carry out the booking unless you have a very good reason. There may be situations where you do not feel able or safe enough to take passengers. For example, if they are carrying open bottles or cans of alcohol or anything dangerous or flammable, or if they are acting in a violent or offensive way. If you do refuse to carry out a booking, be polite and explain why. This could help avoid a complaint. Make sure you tell your operator the full reason why you did not carry out the booking because the operator accepted the booking. The operator is also responsible for either arranging for another driver to carry out the booking or to make it clear to the passenger that it has been cancelled. You must not refuse to take passengers because they are disabled or they are travelling with assistance dogs. For more details, see Section 8, Being Aware of Equality and Disability. Section 4, Staying Safe. This section looks at how to keep you and your passengers safe. It covers driver safety, drugs and alcohol, minimizing conflict. Driver safety. Angry or violent behavior when at work is never acceptable. If a passenger in your vehicle becomes angry or violent, you have a right to say that you will not accept the behavior or that fails and it is safe 
to do so. Ask them to leave. Leave. You should never accept any bad behavior towards you for any reason. Any offense or violent behavior towards you because of your race, faith, sexual orientation, disability, or gender identity is a hate crime. If you experience or witness this type of behavior, TFL urges you to report it to the police so that it can be fully investigated and action taken against the offender. TFL advises drivers to report incidents as soon as possible to the police on 101 or 999 in an emergency. Protecting yourself to provide a safe service for your passengers and to protect you as a driver, you should consider discussing with your operator how they can help protect you from the possibility of aggressive or violent behavior by a passenger. Making sure your operator has given you booking details, such as the passenger's name, pickup point, and destination. Checking the passenger's name and destination before they get into the vehicle. This will help make sure the passenger does not get into the wrong vehicle. Being clear with the passenger about exactly where you are taking them, the route there, how long it is likely to take, and what the fare will be before the journey starts. Letting the operator know about any changes to the booking. The operator must then tell the passenger what the new fare will be. Carrying a loan worker device or asking your operator to provide you with one. All these steps should reduce the risk of any disagreements. If a passenger is aggressive or violent, tell your operator immediately and give them the passenger's full name and address if you know it. In an emergency, Call the police on 999. Warning signs of possible aggressive behavior. Some behavior is a sign that someone is becoming more angry and upset. Below are signs that someone might become aggressive. 1. Tapping their fingers. 2. Crossed arms. 3. Hand held tightly in fist. 4. Aggressive staring. 5. A raised voice. 6. An angry expression. 7. A sudden change in behavior. 8. A change to the voice. Trust your own feelings and never try to ignore these signs. That is 9. If you feel concern, act immediately. Remember, the earlier you notice a possible problem, the more choice you have to avoid it. Drugs and alcohol. When someone has taken drugs or has drunk alcohol, it can affect their ability to think or communicate clearly. Their behavior can be difficult to predict. In some cases, they may become aggressive. Your operator may have warned you about any possible problems when they gave you the booking. Example, if the passenger sounds like they might be drunk, you can also judge the passenger's physical and mental condition when you pick them up. If you have any concerns, then contact your operator immediately. If the passenger cannot communicate clearly to confirm their destination or is unable to walk because of drink or drugs, you have the right to refuse to take them in your vehicle. You can do this because you cannot be sure that they have taken, they have given you the correct address or that they will be able to get out of your vehicle without help. In this situation, if possible, insist that a friend comes with them in your vehicle or ask to speak to a friend of the customer by telephone to confirm the destination. If the passenger is unconscious, extremely unwell, or seems to be injured, or in an emergency situation, there is no one else to help. 
call the emergency service on 999 and stay with them until the service arrives. If the passenger is being aggressive or violent, move somewhere that is safe for you, but where you can still see the person until the emergency service arrives. Think about your personal safety first and do not put yourself at risk. Reducing the risk of violence in a difficult situation. There are certain things you can do to, receive, to reduce the chance of someone being violent or aggressive towards you. These include 1. Talking calmly and not raising your voice. 2. Listening to what someone is saying and not interrupting them. 3. Responding to the person's concerns. 4. Asking questions. 5. Explaining things to them, not arguing. 6. Having a pre-planned way to excuse yourself from a difficult situation. For example, you can't help them, but perhaps someone at the address you are taking them to can sort the problem out for them. Explaining procedures for dealing with unacceptable behavior. For example, you have to stop the vehicle and possibly call the police unless they stop behaving aggressive. So violent. If you cannot reduce the risk of violence, sometimes you are able to calm a situation. If that is the case, you should get away from the aggressive person and exit the situation. If necessary, Find someone somewhere safe to stop the vehicle. Turn off the engine. Take the key, then get out of the vehicle. If the passenger is planning to hurt you, they will probably get out of the vehicle too. This gives you the opportunity to quickly get back in and lock the doors. Then drive away if it is safe to do so. Consider using a loan worker device to let someone know that you need help. If an incident happens while you are away from your vehicle, get to your vehicle when possible and try to take time to calm yourself down before you drive off. After an incident, try to talk about what happened with a friend or a colleague or your operator. Find out if any support is available. There is advice on health and well-being on the TFL website. Report the incident to help avoid it happening in future. What to do if you are attacked or assaulted? It is important for you to know where you can go for help if you are attacked or assaulted. Find out in advance what your operator's reporting procedures are and who to go to after an incident like this. If something happens to you, tell your operator, and if necessary, also call the police and or an ambulance depending on the incident. It is important to record and report incidents that almost happen as well as ones that actually did happen. When you are recording an incident, try and include the following details when and where the incident happened, information about the attacker, name, address, if known, description of clothing, age, gender, whether the attacker was one of your passengers, brief description of the incident. Anything that might have caused the incident, details of any witnesses, type of incident, verbal threats, physical assaults, written threats, description of any injuries, account of the immediate action that was taken. CCTV cameras. Installing CCTV cameras into a vehicle can reduce threats and violent violence against drivers. Signs in the vehicle informing passengers that the CCTV is used may also help to prevent aggressive or violent behavior. You can buy a camera or rent one, although this is an extra cost. Having a CCTV camera may reduce insurance premium. 
This is because a video recording can be useful evidence when there is a dispute with a passenger. The Information Commissioner CCTV Code of Practice requires that signage must be displayed where CCTV is in operation. TFL requires all PHVs fitted with a CCTV system to display the sign shown below somewhere that is easy for passengers to see. The vehicle owner can decide where to put the signage, but it must be displayed somewhere that does not block the driver's view. It must also be a visible, as visible as possible to passengers as they enter the vehicle and while they are traveling in it. TFL CCTV sign for PHVs. This is displayed at the bottom right corner of this page. Section 5. Driver Behavior TFL expects all licensed drivers to offer Londoners and visitors a professional and safe service. Providing excellent customer service is an important part being a London private hire driver. This section explains how TFL expects drivers to behave towards passengers and other road users. Complaints. It is important that each time a passenger gets into a private hire, they receive a high quality of service from their private hire driver. Operators must keep details of all complaints made to them. Operators must report to the police any complaints that involve possible crime so that they can be investigated. Although your operator will normally deal with complaints, passengers may, may might contact the police or TFL directly. They might also contact TFL if they are not satisfied with the way the operator has dealt with, the, with their complaint. In these cases, TFL may carry out its own investigation. If TFL does investigate a complaint that relates to you, they will write to you to respond to the complaint. And TFL has made any other necessary inquiry. TFL will tell you the result of that investigation. Remember, TFL can only make a decision based on the information they receive, so it is important to respond to all their requests for information. If a serious complaint is made against you, or if there is a number of complaints, or there appears to be a pattern of poor behavior, and all the ways to improve your behavior have been tried but have failed, TFL may have to suspend or revoke your license. Unacceptable behavior. As a PAB driver, you offer an extremely important service to the traveling public. You have a responsibility to make sure your passengers feel safe when they travel in your vehicle. The way that you interact with them will have an effect that way they will feel about in the way they feel about the journey they have with you. It is important that you are professional and deal with passengers in a way that makes them feel at ease. You should never use a passenger's personal contact details to start communicating with them about anything other than the booked journey. 